Okay, this is a quick video to explain the differences um, between the different types of cloning. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, um, I might just make a couple of boxes. So I'll make this box, let's give it some height segments. Um, if F4 to turn on the height segments so you can see them. Um, something like that. And then I will make uh, some different clones of this object. So you can make a clone by going into the edit menu, um, hitting clone or shortcut is control V. Um, the other option is to use the move tool. Um, and in this particular case, this is better. Hold down shift and move the object across. That brings up this dialog box and it gives you three different kinds of clone. So there's copy, which is a kind of garden variety everyday copy. These two are kind of unrelated then. Um, there's instance, which makes them identical in every way, and reference, which is a bit of a sort of combination of the two. So a copy, um, you can see that these two objects are totally independent. If I stick a, um, a twist modifier on this guy, um, it has no um, impact on the original. The, if I change the original, it has no impact on the clone. So that's a copy. Um, if I make a clone that is um, using the instance option, Okay, um, you'll notice now um, that these objects are identical. If I change the original, the clone will also change. If I stick a modifier onto either of them, um, let's do a keep it consistent, we'll do a twist. Um, you can see that they're both twisted. Um, and so that's a an instanced clone. Um, probably worth pointing out that if you want these two to sort of start off as instance clones, but you want to kind of separate, um, you can click on this make unique button that separates the, this um, object from the its kind of um, original master object. Um, and now they're, it's essentially just a, um, a copy version of the clone. And finally, um, and probably one of the most useful, is the reference version of clone, which is clicking on this guy, so reference, um, and OK. Um, now you'll notice there's a kind of a line in here. Um, so if I go to the original, there's no, um, it just has the box and then the twist modifier. If I go to the clone, that is a reference clone, you have this line here. Um, you can go back and change the original um, parameters, so the twist amount. Um, you can see they behave like instances, um, but if I go above this um, grey line, um, and let's do a bend, and I'll change the bend amount, you can see that now the bend is just applied to the, um, the re uh, reference clone. If I change the twist in the original, um, they'll both still twist. If I change the box size in the clone, you can see that they still behave as instances, but on top of this gray line, anything that happens above the line only happens to the, um, the reference clone object. So that's um, super useful. Um, and it allows us to do the next step, which is to do, I guess, kind of, um, you can do quite complex um, sort of relationships between objects. Let's do something simple. We'll do a geosphere. Um, let's make it a hemisphere, make it not smooth, and um, just bring down the number of segments a little. Um, and this is uh, going to be a kind of bucky dome. Um, let's call this one Glazing rays. So this is will be our sort of our master object, um, and then we'll make two different copies. So we'll make a reference copy, and we'll call this the um, 
uh, shell and I'll change the color so I can see what I'm doing um, and I'll go back to the original and I'll make another separate clone also reference and we'll call this the um, let's call it the glaze frame frame and again I'll change the color of that uh, let's make it very different so green <coughs> okay so then I've got my original and two different um, reference copies this one um, I might do a just do a very quick um, lattice on it um, and lattice is probably set up to work well with inches um, I'm going to change it to 0.1 in the struts and I'll just um, let's go 0.1 in the um, joints so the joints are these guys in here you can make them super chunky or not so um, I think I liked it if they were fairly recognizable um, and then so that will be my glazing frame I might change that to a bit more tube like so I'll add some um, add some more segments here more sides rather probably don't need more segments um, and then I want that framing to sit over the top of this guy but before I do that I might um, turn this into glass or at least um, make it transparent in the viewport um, so I'll right click on the object um, go into op object properties and make it see-through probably put a glass material on this if I was going to work on it for a bit more um, and polish it up um, and then I want this guy to sit over the top so I'll use the align tool so now my frame is over top, over the top of the glass. Then I want to have um, uh, this one be a kind of shell that covers maybe kind of 30-40% of this, um, which might be something that responds to I don't know, sun shade shading or something like that. Um, here I'll go above the grey line and I'll do a mesh select modifier. I'll select um, I'll choose polygons and I might just have, uh, I'll kind of choose a few fairly randomly uh, something something like that so now those are those polygons are selected from there I will do a delete mesh and you can see now that um, those selected faces are now deleted. Um, the advantage of that, as opposed to doing an edit poly and just going around selecting and deleting faces, if I change my mind, I can go back in here and say, well, actually, I don't want um, those faces. So I'll hold down Alt and just click on those. And But I did want a couple of these faces. And it'll go through and re-delete. Um, on top of that, just to give it some thickness, I'll do a shell modifier. A um, bunch of different settings in here. The main ones you might want to look at, um, I like to straighten the edges because um, it's a more kind of maybe closer to an AutoCAD offset or something. Um, and you can adjust the inner amount and outer amount. Um, there's also a bunch of stuff about material overrides, so you can have, you know, a, a, I don't know plywood on the inside of the um, object. It could be uh, stainless steel or copper on the outside, and you might do a some sort of coloured uh, metal or something on the um, these inside faces. Um, so once I've got something I'm happy with there, I can uh, I can align that guy as well. Um, all of the default settings should be fine because we haven't done any wacky twists or rotations so okay and now I can get into my perspective view and go oh, actually that's looking pretty good but it's not quite expensive enough so what I'd like to do is stick a bit of a kind of twist on that um, and I can go back and then select my original um, 
Geosphere, or I can actually select any of these guys. Um, as long as I go down below the stack, um, the, the gray line in the stack, and apply the modifier there. So I might let's do an expensive twist. Um, and because it's being applied under this gray line, it's actually happening to all of the objects, and then um, these other modifiers are happening on top. So this is um, quite important. If the twist was on top, it would only apply um, over the um, original object, not uh, oh sorry the um, the reference copy that you're um, working with. So because that twists on, so this is twisting the glazing frame, but it's actually twisting all of them. So if I select the um, the uh, let's go the original. There's the shell, and I've moved, I've named these incorrectly. That's actually the glaze frame, and that one was the shell. Shell. Um, but hopefully that's clear. So, and this is important because you don't want to do your twisting before you've shelled. Otherwise, you'll um, get a sort of un well different kind of depths uh, of your shell. Your glazing frame will kind of um, not be a uniform uh, aluminium extrusion or timber extrusion or whatever you're using. Um, so that will be problematic. So that's now made a pretty nice distorted buffy dome, much more expensive because now all of the polygons are different. Um, but if you decide, well, you know, we want to value manage this thing down to something a bit more affordable, uh, you can turn your twist off or on, look at the difference. Is it worth the cost of that? Probably not. Um, can I achieve something exciting by just changing the, uh, the number of um, polygons deleted in this um, mesh select? Um, and, and then you can go in and modify those. If I show end results, you can kind of get a good sense of what the um, you know, adding and subtracting your selections has on the final kind of architectural output. Okay, so that's reference uh, in cloning with copies, instances, and references.